Hey there everybody, Negroth here, bringing you a brand new LP experience. Well, it's time yet again to head back into Silent Hill. That's right, we are now going to play Silent Hill 4, The Room. This was actually the final Silent Hill that was made by Team Silent, the original Japanese people at Konami that made the other three. And it has quite a few departures from normal Silent Hill protocol, I suppose. But we're going to go ahead and start a new game, and we are going to be playing on normal. No puzzle difficulties here, thank god. And pretty much immediately, we already see one of the very large differences from other Silent Hill games. And that is that, well, quite a large portion of it is going to be played from a first-person perspective, of all things. And if you notice there, there's a little eye icon. That means that we are able to investigate something nearby. Thankfully, the game is nice enough to snap our view to... The general area where something we... Whoa. What the hell was that? Yeah, the, uh, the view will actually snap to anything close by that we might need to investigate. And already we're noticing... Well, it's actually a bit hard to notice with the texture. But yeah, this is apparently a blood and rust covered room. Though apparently our main protagonist here does not actually seem to recognize, well, that his room was rust and blood colored in the first place. But with the air being so heavy in the bedroom and a scream we uh, heard from out here, maybe it's time to investigate the rest of the apartment. definitely seems as if the rest of the apartment is in a similar state of disrepair. And it looks like we're uh, pretty much stuck in here for the time being. And these shoes, these shoes aren't even mine. Truly, truly terrifying. But there are a number of inconsequential things you can examine in the kitchen. I'll just be skipping it for right now because he'll say stupid things like, I don't want to cook right now. And once we walk near this wall, our, our notice is immediately brought to that face in the wall. There are certain numbers and certain triggers you have to make sure and hit before you can progress the game, and some of them a bit obtuse. And it's a bit hard to make out due to the low res texture, but it seems that this rather grotesque picture has 21 dead bodies in it. And we see a portrait 
of what appears to be a young anime man. Not really sure who that is, but I'm sure we'll find out. And feel free to pause this at your own leisure, but this is, well, foreshadowing, let's go with that, about a, uh, a baby that was cut away from his mother via a magical cord. Not sure what that could be. Who knows? And for some reason, the baby ended up at Wish House, whatever that might be, and everyone was nice to him there, and well, the baby was happy. That sounds like a pretty fun story. Even though we can't actually find out the ending, so... Well, who knows how that might have ended up. This TV's rather annoying. And apparently we have no idea where this TV came from. Thought I had a record player. I wonder where that record player could be. Oh, there it is. That was hard to find. And yet, he doesn't know what the stereo is. He just... I, I don't know. Maybe it's a mistranslation. But yeah, all we had to do to progress is to examine the stereo, to examine the TV, and to walk by that face in the wall. And we should now be able to proceed normally. dream. So we get our first real good look at Henry Townsend, man about town, introvert, uh, hikimura, I guess as the Japanese would call them. And we get a normal view of his room. Let's go ahead and have a look around at his amazing bed. And he is apparently an avid photographer. And this definitely is not foreshadowing of any kind. In the fact that he has pictures from his recent trip to Silent Hill, where apparently, uh, well, he had actually a pretty good uh, trip there. 
no horrible monsters, no guilt-tormented visions of horrible things. But hey, there's a phone there. Maybe we can uh, phone for help. Hello? Help me. What? Huh? The cord's cut. Yes, as you can tell, Henry is the man of a thousand emotions, ranging from confusion to apathy to... apathetic confusion. But, uh, yeah, the voice acting has never been great in Silent Hill, and uh, it doesn't get any better in this one. But, yeah, just a few more pictures around the room we can investigate from Henry's travels into Silent Hill. I also find that there is nothing interesting on his desk, just a few pixelated pictures. And I can't really tell what's going on in this one. It looks like maybe someone on a bicycle? I don't know, it might be protozoas for all I know. But there is nothing really else for us in Henry's bedroom for right now, so let's go check outside. Hmm. Well, it's a lot better than the blood and rust-covered nightmare we were in before, but yeah, we are definitely stuck in this apartment for right now. What's going on here? <clears throat> oh man. I hope my luck changes before the party. So, through our adventures in the apartment, we can do a number of interesting things to progress the story or find out little tidbits here and there, such as look through the peephole of the front door. And underneath the front door, we also find a really odd letter. The first letter, apparently. And we add that to our scrapbook, which is just our collection of notes throughout the game. And uh, who is Walter? Not Walter. Maybe the previous occupant. But nothing really else we can do with that door. And oh, looks like a piece of paper over there. But before we can investigate that, the game forces us to learn about another new game mechanic and something I don't really feel is a positive game mechanic, which is 
limited inventory that's right this bar along the bottom here is our inventory we cannot hold any more items than that and we will be getting a lot more items than we can carry so that's why you have this nice little storage box slash comfy seat but I think we should be able to get that piece of paper now or not no instead we're immediately distracted by the outside world apparently uh, Henry might have ADD or something like that and we apparently want to stare at this uh, low polygon count woman She was, uh, she seemed pretty footloose and fancy free. But it does draw our attention to the fact we can look outside and see that everything appears normal in the outside world. Except, what are those people doing in that window? Kind of seems like they're looking at us, but as far as Henry can tell, nobody can hear his screams or... Nobody seems to notice his uh, being in the apartment. What was that, actually? Well, first, I do want to get this piece of paper. I've been trying to get to it for a couple minutes now. And it's very important that you, uh, you read this. Not really. So we find out that there's a rather old piece of paper it talks about the holy assumption which apparently has allowed someone to create an alternate dimension where people can get trapped I guess that uh, alternate dimensions are very prevalent in Silent Hill but well, we're not actually in Silent Hill right now we don't seem to have any connection other than well we visited there on a vacation trip and I don't know, maybe we brought back something haunted. Who who knows? Are you yearning for that special place to spend quality time with your loved one? Do you need to relax and get away from it all? Come to Silent Hill for the ultimate peaceful getaway. Yeah, there are a few instances where you can turn on the radio and listen to a little blurb. It's just a nice little backstory for stuff. And this red book here is our only save point. We will be coming back to the apartment very, very many times. And Sunderland, that, that name does seem fairly familiar. Hmm. But we are almost done exploring the apartment for right now. Probably won't be spending as much time here since, well, the game wants you to explore pretty much the layout from the get-go. But there is something nice to get in the fridge in the kitchen. Ah, truly a bachelor's fridge. We have some chocolate milk. Which, amazingly enough, is not a healing item. It is going to be a quest item for later on, and we get our first weapon. Booze. Yeah, this wine bottle actually introduces another new game mechanic that I don't really agree with, which is breakable weapons. Initially, the wine bottle will start off as something of a bludgeon, and then it will break and become a stabbing weapon actually a better stabbing weapon than bludgeon but it's a pretty shit weapon all around and I do kinda need the inventory space so it does allow me to show off the fact that we can store items in the box but I think we should go check out what that noise was I think it might have come from this other door that we haven't investigated yet
wonder if I can get out this way. I will say one thing, this game does have some very, very good sound work. But if we had investigated the chains on the door, and after we investigated the rubble in the bathroom from the newly found hole, well, it seems that Henry seems to think there's someone else in the apartment with him. But where they could be hiding is a bit hard to say. And before we can actually get into the hole, there's a broken pipe in the way, which means we get our first permanent weapon this steel pipe, which is actually a fairly noticeable staple of the Silent Hill armory. And I guess with no other place to go, it's time to go into the hole. 